Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there. Sure, it was today. Yes, yes, come on, we're gonna miss the train. Oh, oh, hold on, let me get some of the essentials here. You can't go fishing without the right equipment. Aunt Stacy, how is Eddie taking us fishing today? Come on, Grandpa, come on, Grandpa, come on, come on. Oops. Ah. I got one thing. Gone fishing. <laughs> Hello there, Stacy. Why the long face? We'll bring you back some fish. Mm, there's a problem down the line, Harry. What's the trouble? Broken signal. We have to fix it or else the express won't get through. Grandpa, come on, come on! The train's pulling out! Kids, I'm real sorry, but we've got a big problem here. And you know the saying, work before play. But you already worked. Besides, we're not going to play. We're going to fish. Hey, hey, hey. It won't take long. We'll take the train to Twiddly Junction and switch to the Lucky Lake Local. Cheer up. The fish will still be there. Oh, Matt, Tanya. I know you want to go fishing. But you know something? Harry has important responsibilities. Everyone on the Indian Valley Railroad needs to have that signal fixed. Or else there could be an accident. You both have responsibilities, jobs, don't you? I have to set the table. Uh -huh. I have to take out the garbage. Yeah. But Harry promised he'd take us fishing. Well, if Harry promised you, then you'll go, because Harry keeps his promises. But Harry first has to fix the signal. The Indian Valley Railroad depends on Harry to help the trains run safely. Oh! I almost forgot! A package came addressed to both of you and a letter for Tanya. A package? Yeah. It's right on the information desk. Hello, Tanya. Hello, Matt. Hi, Mr. Conductor. How'd you get in there? I climbed in. Then I shipped myself to Shining Time Station. I wanted to see how the mails are running. And I'm here to report that the mail train is very bumpy. But I'm pleased to say it does run on time. Weren't you both going fishing with Harry? Harry was supposed to take us. Yes, but now he's working. So, left behind at the station, are you? That very thing happened to a conductor friend of mine on the island of Sodor. Tell you what, you both look in great need of some fun. I'll tell you the story that ends on Kidori. There'll be a grin on your chin when I'm done. Thomas the tank engine is very proud of his branch line. He thinks it's the most important part of the whole railway. His two coaches, Annie and Clarabelle, agree with him. Annie can only take passengers, but Clarabelle can take passengers, baggage, and the conductor. They are both old and need new paint, but Thomas loves them very much. As they run backwards and forwards along the line, they sing songs to each other. When Thomas starts from a station, he sings, Oh, come along, we're rather late. Oh, come along, we're rather late. And the coaches sing, We're coming along, we're coming along. They don't mind what Thomas says to them, because they know he is trying to please Sir Topham Hatt. And they know, too, that if Thomas is cross, he's not cross with them. One day, they had to wait for Henry's train, 
which made Thomas very cross. How can I run my line properly if Henry is always late? He doesn't realize that Sir Topham Hatt depends on me. Thomas whistled impatiently. He wanted to leave, but he had to wait for Henry's passengers. At last, Henry came. Where have you been, lazy bones? asked Thomas. Oh dear, my system is out of order. No one understands my case. You don't know what I suffer, moaned Henry. Rubbish, said Thomas. You're too slow. You need exercise. The conductor blew his whistle, and Thomas started so quickly that he left him behind. The conductor waved his red flag to stop Thomas, but he was well on his way, steaming out of the station. Come along, come along, puffed Thomas. But Clarabel didn't want to come. I've lost my nice conductor. I've lost my nice conductor, she sobbed. Annie tried to tell Thomas what had happened. We haven't a conductor. We haven't a conductor. But he was hurrying and wouldn't listen. Annie and Clarabel tried to put on their brakes, but they couldn't without the conductor. Where is our conductor? Where is our conductor? They cried. But Thomas didn't stop till they came to a signal. Bother that signal, said Thomas. What's the matter? I don't know, said his driver. The conductor will tell us in a minute. They waited and waited, but the conductor didn't come. Peep, peep, peep. Where is the conductor, whistled Thomas. We've left him behind, sobbed Annie and Clarabel together. Everyone looked. And there he was, running as fast as he could along the line with his flags in one hand and his whistle in the other. He was very hot, so he had a drink, then told them all about it. I am very sorry, said Thomas. We all make mistakes, replied the conductor. Look, the signal is down. We can go. Let's make up for lost time. Annie and Cladabel were so pleased to have their conductor again that they sang as fast as you like, as fast as you like to Thomas all the way. They reached the end of the line quicker than ever before. So have a little patience with Harry. Who knows, you might be off fishing before you know it. And cheer up, or else I'm going to stay in this box and mail myself to Kula Lagumba. Where is that? I have no idea, but I'm sure kids there are a lot cheerier than you two. <laughs> will you take us fishing? If your grandpa said he'd take you, I'm sure he will. But he's always so busy. He's a hard worker. A good railroad man. Have faith in him. Now, if you'll both excuse me, I have a very important matter to attend to myself. What? Lunch. I'm starving. What are you having? A whole shrimp. I have an idea. Why don't we help Harry so we'll finish sooner? Great idea. Are you finished? Are you finished? Not yet. What can we do? We're here to help you. Do either of you have a number three hex key? No. Then I'm afraid I can't help this time, but thanks anyways. I've got to run to the hardware store. Don't worry, I'll be back in 15 minutes. Where's the next train? The next train? Exactly 12 minutes. And that's the last train for two hours. Well, except for the Fireball Express, but that doesn't slow down to stop at our station, and it won't run at all unless that signal gets fixed. I know it. He's never going to take us fishing. He's never going to get here again. Now we'll have to sit here all afternoon with nothing to do. Stop.
Stacy? Yeah? Would you take us fishing? Oh, honey, I can't. I can't leave the station. But I'll tell you what I can do. I can point out the bright side. What bright side? Let's go look in the picture machine and you'll find out. It's five minutes before the hour precisely. I knew it. Grandpa's never going to make it. And we're never going to go fishing. You wouldn't be the first. Thomas had his eye on that particular activity recently. He wanted to go fishing as much as you do. Thomas is a train engine. That's what the other engine said. But why should that stop him? Uh, I had better tell you the story. When Thomas puffed along his branch line, he always looked forward to something special. The sight of the river. As he rumbled over the bridge, he would see people fishing. Thomas often wanted to stay and watch, but his driver said no. What would Sir Topham Hatt say if we were late? Every time he met another engine, he would say, I want to fish. But they all had the same answer. Engines don't go fishing. Silly stick in the muds, thought Thomas. One day, he stopped as usual to take in water at the station by the river. Out of order? Bother, said Thomas. I'm thirsty. Never mind, said his driver. We'll get some water from the river. found a bucket and some rope and went to the bridge. Then the driver let the bucket down to the water. The bucket was old and had five holes. So they had to fill it, 
pull it up and empty it into Thomas's tank as quickly as they could, several times over. Finished at last. That's good, that's good, puffed Thomas, and Annie and Clarabelle ran happily behind. Suddenly, Thomas began to feel a pain in his boiler. Steam began to hiss from his safety valve in an alarming way. There's too much steam, said his driver. Oh dear, groaned Thomas, I'm going to burst, I'm going to burst. They damped down his fire and struggled on. I've got such a pain, I've got such a pain, Thomas hissed. They stopped just outside the last station, uncoupled Annie and Clarabelle, and ran Thomas, who was still hissing fit to burst, on a siding right out of the way. Then while the conductor telephoned for an engine inspector, the driver found notices in large letters, which he hung on Thomas in front and behind. Danger, keep away. Soon the inspector and Sir Topham Hatt arrived. Cheer up, Thomas, they said, we'll soon put you right. The driver told them what had happened. So the feed pipe is blocked, said the inspector. I'll just look in the tanks. He climbed up and peered in. Then he came down. Excuse me, sir, please look in the tank and tell me what you see. Certainly, Inspector, replied Sir Topham Hatt. He clambered up, looked in, and nearly fell off in surprise. Inspector, he whispered, can you see fish? Gracious goodness me, how did the fish get there, driver? We must have fished them from the river with our bucket, replied Thomas's driver. Well, Thomas, so you and your driver have been fishing, but fish don't suit you. We must get them out. They all took turns at fishing in Thomas's tank, while Sir Topham Hatt looked on and told them how to do it. When they had caught all the fish, they had a lovely picnic supper of fish and chips. Mmm, that was good, said Sir Topham Hatt. But fish don't suit you, Thomas. So you mustn't do it again. No, sir, I won't, said Thomas sadly. Engines don't go fishing. It's too uncomfortable. At least Thomas had a chance to fish. We're going to be stuck here. What time is it? It's five minutes later than earlier. I knew Grandpa would make it. And we're never going to go fishing. What happened to all your faith in Harry? And where's your hope? What's the good of hoping for something when you know it isn't going to happen? How do you know what can happen? Watch. I'm going to send a train right through your imaginations. Anything can happen. Maybe the train will be late. 
Nope, it's right on time. Do you see him? No. Any sign of Harry? Oh, that's too bad. Hey, say, what was that letter you got? I forgot all about it. From my pen pal, Lunky. Oh, you write to her and she writes to you. Yep. Sometimes we send each other pictures. Wow! Oh, that's very nice. Do you think you could do something like that? I don't know. Why don't we give it a try? I've got paper and I've got crayons. You too, man. Miss Jones, oh. I trust all your good customers are having a wonderful time with my terrific machines. Oh. Hey, hey, what's going on here, huh? Come on, you two. You're blocking the way for the customers who want to put money inside my machines. What customers? Oh, you mean passengers. I don't have any customers because you two are blocking the way for them to go to the machines. Now, come on, up, let's go, huh? Come on, up, 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 up. And what is that that you're uh, drawing there? Oh, not bad, not bad. Nothing to shout about, but uh, not bad. <laughs> you know, uh, Schemer here is a pretty good drawer, you know? Yeah, but I don't do kid stuff like uh, fish or uh, faces. I do like uh, pastoral things, you know, uh, natural setting kind of deals, you know what I mean? Sure, Schemer. Oh, I do, I'm serious. I, uh, tell you what, uh, you pick any season for me to draw, I can draw it. Okay, pick a season. Summer. No, 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 not, not summer. That's the wrong sheet. It's too hot. Summer's too hot to draw. Fall? Too many colors. Too many colors. Spring. Matt, everybody does spring. Winter. Winter. All right, let it be winter. That's probably the hardest season to draw, but uh, I'll give it a chance here. All right, let's see now. Winter! It's a snowstorm! <laughs> it's a snowstorm! Skimmer. Okay, relax, relax. Say, so, kids, <clears throat> how would you two like to draw my self-portrait? What do you say, huh? You could make me the uh, Mona Lisa of the business world. Tell you what, you draw my picture, and every time you do that, I will give you uh, a nickel to split between the two of you. That's like uh, three or four cents a piece every time you draw it, huh? Okay, let's see. Uh, who's gonna want? Stacy's gonna want uh, my self-portrait. Uh, Harry's gonna want it. Uh, all my friends will want one. Oh, so that's, uh, we got two so far. Forget uh, it, schemer. Hey, forget it, forget it. I'm not gonna forget it. I'll do it myself. Fine, who needs you? I'm a self-made man anyway. I'll do it myself. Hey, <laughs> self-portrait. Does it look like me? No. No, not really. It doesn't? A little bit, though. Doesn't it feel good right in here? The nose? I'm back. I got the part. Oh. The signal's all fixed. Swell. Great. Come on, kids. Get your stuff. Let's go. We missed the trains, Grandpa. Nonsense. I've never missed a train in my life. Come on. Are you coming fishing or aren't you? There are no more trains, Grandpa. Is that so? Then what do you call that? Children is the Fireball Express, but you only see it 80 miles per hour. Why is it stopping here? Because it's taking us fishing, that's why. Oh! Now, come on, get your stuff. <laughs> How did you know the Express was going to stop here? Because the Fireball Express isn't going 80 miles an hour anywhere without this. <laughs> the train dispatcher is having the Fireball Express stop here to pick us up and drop us off at the broken signal. We'll put up the signal that I repaired, and then we'll take the Lucky Lake local and look out, fish. Oh! <laughs> bye, 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 honey. Bye. Have fun. Grace, you ever been fishing? 
fishing. The only fishing I do is for compliments. <laughs> hey, maybe we should all go fishing. Mm -mm. No way, baby. Uh-uh, most fish are bigger than we are, and instead of pulling them out, they could pull us in. I have an idea. Let's never go fishing. That's fine by me. I'm cool right here at the piano. Let's do some playing. That guy is out there, and uh, he hates us playing for free. Hey, we could play something real fast. Yeah, how about the Wabash? Cannonball! A one, two, a one, two, three. Where dreams 